would also remind members of the church council and all of our clergy associated with the with this charge that next Sunday at 930 we'll be having a special charge conference everybody's welcome to come but it'll be the members of the church council who have voice and vote at that um, we'll have that special charge conference in order to to finish up our process as far as the sale of the Rock Creek property with that so take note of that uh, that time and that place uh, also remember that on the 16th at 1030 is our um, children's uh, Christmas program uh, will be at 10.30 on the 16th, so take note of that. I know they've been working hard. It looks like it's going to be a really great program uh, with that, so that's a time for to come and, and share in that worship time together. And that at 4 o'clock today at the Herrick Chapel is going to be the, um, the community Christmas uh, concert with that, uh, along with that. You have a number of inserts in there as well. Also on Sunday the 16th at 2 p.m. here, uh, is going to be a Christmas piano program. Julie's going to give us an hour of uh, Christmas music with that, so you can mark that time on the 16th, 2 p.m. Uh, you can come and enjoy uh, that Christmas music with that. On the back side of your white insert uh, is some information about Bidwell Riverside. That's a particular uh, ministry in Des Moines that we've offered support to over, over the years. Um, they're having some opportunities from this holiday that we can join with them in providing uh, some service to, to the folk that... Uh, they, they take care of, so you can look through that, and if you feel led to participate in any of those, uh, you can follow the instructions there and, and go with it. Um, on your green insert, you have on one side the explanation of this year's Advent offerings, so you take note of that, and you can then be prepared to respond accordingly. On the other side is some information about the alternative gift market, which will be in the Friendship Center uh, following worship services. Last hour, I went ahead and did the blue insert and promptly got in trouble because I stole everybody's thunder. Uh, there were some folk that were lined up to give some special announcements. So, is there anybody this hour who is going to speak about the No Room in the Inn? Okay. Uh, well, this year um, will be the 10th year that the Ministerial Association has sponsored No Room at the Inn which is a, a display of nativity scenes trying to keep Christ in Christmas. Traditionally, it started out at the Jingle Bell holiday night, but that's gotten so early that it's going to be this Friday. And uh, the reason for that is that the Drake Library is having the um, Festival of Trees that night, and our Methodist Church Boy Scout group is having a tenderloin dinner in our Friendship Center that night. So we will be having it here at our church um, and it's going to be down in the lower level, and so I'm panicked that people will not remember to bring nativity scenes to be shown, and we will have their Methodist tables down there. Uh, so if anybody has nativity scenes or angels, we're going to have an angel room uh, this year, uh, please bring them to the church office during the week this week. We'll be setting up Thursday at 1 o'clock, and um, I, afterwards I will bring, repack them, bring them back up to the church office where they'll be locked, or you can come and pick them up on Friday evening at 7.30 if you want to take them back home with you that night. And if anyone would like to help with it, I would love to hear from you. Thank you. Okay. Um, and last hour they shared that if you're going to bring a nativity, put it in a box with your name on it, yes. and that when the yes. show is done, that they'll be repacked in that box and left in the office to be picked up. Yes, thank okay. You. Thank you much. Um, on the back side of the blue insert was a, a message, an invitation from Connections. Was there anybody going to do this? Okay before I get in trouble again. <laughs> yeah, and he'd have to live with trouble, so that would not be good. <laughs> um, I'm part of the Connections Committee, and what we are lifting up for you is our college care package ministry. And previously, we've just gone out and bought them, uh, the items, but we're opening it up to you folks to help this year. Uh, it'll be fun to see what ideas you come up with. There are suggestions at the bottom of your blue slip there. And... Um, but it's not confined to food, as you can see toward the end, that there were some suggestions such as stress balls or toys. <laughs> so at that age, they still enjoy toys, at all ages probably. So um, we're hoping that you will be able to. We aren't really trying to say 40 of this and 40 of that. We'll work with whatever you bring. Thanks so much. Okay, thank you. Morning. The Grinnell uh, Connected PTO is sponsoring a breakfast reading club on Wednesday, December 19th from 7.20 in the morning till 8, so about 40 minutes. 
The intention is that as each child uh, arrives at school, elementary school, that morning they'll be read to for approximately a half hour. Now the intention is that the parents or a family member do it, but as most, uh, a lot of them have work schedules that won't allow that, so they're seeking volunteers to help come in and read for that short period of time. This kind of falls in with our church uh, intention of helping with childhood literacy, so it's a really good thing for us to do. So if you're available on Wednesday the 19th, at 7 come about 7.15 in the morning to Bailey Park. This is going to be all three men elementary, but we're working for uh, Bailey Park. So come to Bailey Park about 7.15. They'll show you where to go, read to the child, and, and enjoy. So if you will, sign up and uh, put your uh, contact information. If you're a little doubtful, sign up anyway, and we'll contact you if something comes up in between. That's all right, too. So thank you. Thank you. Are there any other additions, corrections? We'd also want to draw your attention on the very back of your bulletin and the, the listing of what all is going on today. Uh, a reminder that at 2 o'clock this afternoon at the Christian Family Center of First Ankeny uh, is going to be a uh, meeting with the bishop where she's going to be sharing uh, some conversation about uh, uh, on the, the, the way forward uh, in what's coming before the general, special general conference. Uh, there are several of us that are going to go. If you're interested in, in either carpooling or caravanning, uh, you can be here at the church at 1230. We'll get ourselves lined up, and then we'll take off. Some are going to be going directly and then meeting us there. So 2 o'clock this afternoon, 1230, if you wanted uh, a ride or to get in line with the caravan if you're not sure where you're going. Any other additions? I invite you to stand as you're able, that you can greet each other with your signs of Christian love and reconciliation. Where'd it go? Where was it? reading today we'll hear the words hope and encouragement encouragements defined uh, as to fill with courage or strength of purpose it also suggests the raising of one's confidence especially by an external agency or other people I don't think anyone would disagree that we all need encouragement along the way of our daily lives uh, with the many things that that we all face um, getting encouragement from others to fight through any adverse times is a great way to navigate through those situations and great support. However, um, besides God always being there with us, um, without us having that physical being, what happens when we are alone and need encouragement? Well, I think, I think of an acronym of BYOE may be necessary. And BYOE would be a little bit of a spin-off of BYOB, but no, the last word is not beverage in this case. Um, I think back to some, some history of my coaching days with Coach Hamilton and Coach Wallace at the college, and I remember the first time I heard that BYOB acronym, it was bring your own blocker. And he was referring to a ball carrier where he uh, might have had to, to exert a little more force to, to get to where he wanted to go, and he didn't have any help at, the, at his side. Um, now, BYOE, to me, translates into bring your own encourager meaning how we handle our own situation if we have no one else to encourage us at that particular time. And I'd like to read a short story here as an illustration about that. And it's entitled, Potatoes, Eggs, and Coffee Beans. And he goes, once upon a time, a daughter complained to her father that her life was miserable and that she didn't know how she was going to make it. She was tired of fighting and struggling all the time. It just seemed as if one problem was solved and then another one would surface. Her father, who was a chef, took her to the kitchen and he filled three pots 
with water and placed each of them on a high fire. Once the three pots began to boil, he placed potatoes in one pot, eggs in, another, in the second pot, and then ground coffee beans in the third. He let them sit and boil and without saying a word to his daughter, the daughter moaned and impatiently waited and wondered what he was doing. We've probably all been in those situations if we've been parents before. After 20 minutes, he turned off the burners. He took the potatoes out of the pot and placed them in a bowl. He pulled the boiled eggs out and placed them in a bowl. And then he ladled the coffee out and placed it in a cup. And then turning to her, he asked, daughter, what do you see? And of course, she says, uh, potatoes, eggs, and coffee, she hastily replied. And then he said, look closer and touch the potatoes. So she did and noted that they were soft. He then asked her to take an egg and break it. And after pulling off the shell, she observed the hard boiled egg. Finally, he asked her to sip the coffee. Its rich aroma brought a smile to her face. And then she looked up and said, Father, what does this mean? He then explained that the potatoes, the eggs, and the coffee beans had each faced the same adversity, the boiling water. However, each one reacted differently. The potato went, into a, went in strong, hard, and unrelenting, but in the boiling water, it became soft and weak. The egg was fragile, with the thin outer shell protecting its liquid interior until it was put in the boiling water, and then the inside of the egg became hard. However, the, coffee, er, the ground coffee beans were unique. After they were exposed to the boiling water, they changed the water and created something new. Which are you, he asked his daughter. When adversity knocks on your door, how do you respond? Are you a potato, an egg, or the coffee bean? You know, in life, things happen all around us, and th things happen to us, but the only thing that truly matters is what happens within us. You know, we can be our own encourager when adversity strikes, and you seem to be the only human around that can share with you or support you. Remember the, remember the coffee beans in that case, taking their adverse situation and turning it into a new creation of coffee. Please pray with me. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this beautiful day and the opportunity to worship you together. Please help us to remember we can be our own encourager while using your teachings and lessons as we navigate our way through the adverse times that we will all experience. In your heavenly name we pray. Amen. Please stand if you're able for the call to worship. It's everywhere, darkness, anger, despair, hopelessness. Look closely, the signs of God's wonders are present. Pain and mourning are for but a time, God's love is forever. There are those who walk among us with such loving spirits and gentle compassion. Look for them, for they are reflectors of God's love. Lord, as we light the candle of hope, help us to behold your love and mercy everywhere. Amen. Please join us now in the opening hymn, Hail to the Lord's Anointed, found in the United Hymnal number 203.
You may be seated. Please joining in the opening prayer. Ever-present God, remind us this day that you are always with us. Strengthen us as we worship together that we may pay attention to the signs of your presence all around us. When our feet wander, guide us back to your path. When our attention drifts and we lose our way, teach us the way we should go. If we squander the time you have given us, help us prioritize you and your teachings. Remember us according to your faithful love. In your holy name we pray. Amen. God is good and righteous in all things, teaching us the way we should go. God welcomes us into the arms of mercy and love. The first reading today is from Jeremiah 33, 14 through 16. Much of the story told in Jeremiah has to do with the threat and fulfillment of the destruction of Judah and, in particular, Jerusalem. This week's reading is addressed to a people in exile. God's promise, in this case, is meant to be a comfort and source of hope to the exiled. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will fulfill the promise I made to the house of Israel and the house of Judah. In those days and at that time, I will cause a righteous branch to spring up for David, and he shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In those days, Judah will be saved and Jerusalem will live in safety, and this is the name by which it will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. This is the word of God. And now the gift of music will be the Rose Carol performed by the Carol and Choir. Thank you, choir. Even though there is some apoplectic language in today's gospel reading, the overall tenor of the passage is one of hope and encouragement. Though fear and foreboding are significant elements of this event, Jesus says, stand up and raise your hands because your redemption is drawing near. Signs will be giving and God's people must be alert. Constantly prayer for strength in, pre in preparation to stand before the Son of Man. There will be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars, and on the earth distress among nations, confused by the roaring of the sea and the waves. People will faint from near and foreboding of what is coming upon the world, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now when these things begin to take place, stand up and raise your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. Then he told them a parable. Look at the fig tree and all the trees. As soon as they sprout leaves, you can see for yourselves and know that summer is already near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that the kingdom of God is near. Truly I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. Be on guard so that your hearts are not weighed down with dissipation and drunkenness and the worries of this life, and that the day does not catch you unexpectedly like a trap, for it will come upon all who live on the face of the whole earth. Be alert at all times, praying that you have the strength to escape all these things that will take place and to stand before the Son of Man. This is the Gospel of the Lord. And now we invite the children to come up for time with the young with Laura. Okay. How many of you have pets at home? What do you have? cat and a dog. What do you have? A dog. You have a lot, don't you? <laughs> a dog? Well, I've talked about my puppies before, and, you know, there's a, there's a poster that used to be real popular that said, everything I need to learn about life, I learned from my dog, right? Well, here is a picture of one of my dogs. This is our Jack Russell Terrier, and he's white. Notice how white he is, right? Well, that's because he's all clean. But 
We adopted him from the animal rescue shelter. You got black dogs? Oh. And white. So he does have white on him, right? Well, I adopted mine from the animal rescue shelter, and um, we adopted him, and he's become part of our family, and we love him very, very much as part of our family, right? And so he stays in the house most of the time, but every now and then he goes outside, and sometimes, what do you think about that? <laughs> right? Sometimes it comes a whole different story, doesn't it? This is what we like to call bad dog, <laughs> right? Okay, so he comes up, but he comes up to the door and he wants back in the house. No way. So there's no way I can let him in the house, but I love him and I want him to come in. So what do I do? Right. Now, has anybody ever given their dog a bath? Who gets the bath? <laughs> the dog and the person giving him the bath. But I love him, so therefore I give him the bath and I get him all cleaned back up so that he can come back in the house. Well, you know, sometimes that just tells us uh, a little spiritual story too. God has adopted us, and he loves us, and he wants us to dwell with him forever and ever in heaven. But you know what? Sometimes we're a little naughty, and we get a little dirty, and we get a little muddy, right? But because of Jesus, and that's why we celebrate his birth and coming down, because, because he bridges that gap, and it's his blood that cleanses us and allows us to dwell forever in heaven. Can you pray with me, everybody? Father, we just thank you for your gift of Jesus and for uh, his cleansing power that we might all dwell together with you forever and ever as one big loving family. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you. What gets you excited? I mean, really excited. Is it golf? Or cars? Maybe it's fishing or, or family or politics or just people. Maybe it's model building or quilting or, or music or, or sports. You know, those things that when you get to talking about them, you just feel yourself coming alive. You can always tell when someone's talking about something they're truly excited about because as they talk, their excitement begins to get reflected in the person that they are speaking to. They start getting excited as you share. They begin even to join in with some of their own story. Maybe they'll even interject themselves to the point where that reminds me of, and they take this conversation in a whole new direction towards what it is they're truly excited about. One of the reasons that we have decorated this room so lavishly for this season is to get people excited. We fill it with symbols, some of which we know the meaning of, and some we don't remember what they mean. But when we come in, we see them. We don't sit and ponder about the meaning behind all it is that our eyes see in this room at this point. We just come in, we see it, and we ooh, and we ah, and we get excited. And that's okay. God wired us in such a way that when things line up just right, we connect, we feel alive, we get excited. This gets us excited for all the same reason that Jeremiah and his listeners got excited. For they heard that Messiah, Emmanuel, God with us, is coming. Now, truth be told, I didn't used to think much about excitement other than it usually marked something that was just plain fun at least not until a friend and I once had a conversation about it. You know, there are some things in our lives that we just expect to be excited for, things like birthdays and vacations and even Christmas, maybe sleeping in. We get excited about those things, we anticipate them, and we look forward to the moment we get to be a part of it. And then there are some other things, like going to the dentist. I'll apologize to Scott later. 
like going to the dentist or, or washing dishes or, or cleaning our room or, or even going to work. For the most part, those are not things that we've put on the list of things we truly are excited about. We expect them to be moments when maybe we act out of responsibility or duty. And when we talk to folk who are sharing about those things, while they may not be all that excited, we really do appreciate it when they at least don't grumble about it. We don't expect them, when they start talking about any of those things, to be prancing about, barely able to contain themselves as they anticipate the next moment when they get to be a part of. But you know, God has designed each of us with those points where we do come so alive that we are contagious to the people around us. I can't help but wonder, why is that? Actually, our reading from Jeremiah this morning gives us a clue. You see, Jeremiah was writing to a people who needed to be excited. They had found themselves crushed between two superpowers of their time, and, and they had absolutely nothing left, no hope, no promise of future. And yet Jeremiah reminds them, Messiah's coming. The promise is restated. They're reminded that timing is, is coming and not far off when, when all of God's promises will be given. That's something to be excited about. So excited that when everything else was falling apart, Jeremiah even went out and bought some new property. He wanted people to know that in spite of what it looks like to you, it's time to get excited. God is I think God built excitement into us so that we could actually find something greater than ourselves in life. I think God made us excitable so that we can see past ourselves, past our successes and past our failures, and see that God is present with us. So back to my question. What gets you excited? Think hard about whatever it is as to why it's exciting to you. By now, most of you know that one of the things that I really get excited about is just taking a day and going trout fishing in northeast Iowa. I will get up way before the sun and not even feel sorry for myself for doing it. I'll load the car and I will drive in that pre-dawn time for four hours in order to be at the stream ready to go at that first light. I've been known even to camp out in 20-degree weather just to be sure I'll be there at just the right time. I will stand in 40-degree in water up to my knees with a 90-plus degree sun beating down on my head, leaving my body not knowing whether it should shiver or sweat. I will fish in wind and water so cold that the line will actually freeze to the guides there on the fish pole. I will spend the entire day up there and then come home without even a nibble and already be thinking about the next time I get to go. Why? Well, some would say it's a mental health issue. <laughs> some would say it's merely an escape from reality. Some would say it's a total waste of time and money. Some would say it is so boring. But you know, I don't go up there to catch the fish. I go up there to get caught, to experience, and to be part of something that's bigger than I am. When I fish a hole, and I know there's trout in that hole, I will work it until I've tried everything short of dynamite in order to catch that one fish. It's sort of what God does to me. I get excited about going up to work those streams because there, in the excitement that I find, I find what God gets excited about when God's working with me. You see, God doesn't give up on me just because I'm feeling contrary. God won't give up on me because my world has become an uncomfortable place for me to be. God won't give up on me because I reject everything that God offers me. God won't quit because I'm hiding under a rock. God won't quit because the line connecting us just snapped under the load of life. God won't quit sometimes I need to know, really know that. And so I go fishing, and I get excited. 
we've decked out this room with, with greenery, with lights, with banners, and with candles. But what we've really done is that we have decorated this room with excitement. Messiah is coming. Can you feel it? The one who reminds us that God never gives up on us is coming. Even if we are crushed to the point that the people in the world around us no longer recognizes us, God does. And God is coming. We may get impatient with waiting four more weeks until we can jump into that moment with both feet, but that's okay too. You see, impatience is just part of being excited. Amidst all of the commercials, the activities, the preparations, the extra expenses, and the memories that these next few weeks will bring, we need to remember this is a time to get excited. Your God is coming to you. You need to know that, really know that. Find time for what excites you and look for God looking for you in that moment. Then find someone to share the excitement with. Be contagious. The healing of our broken world begins with our willingness to share those places where we find God and where God finds us. I invite you to stand as you're able that we can join together in hymn number 2177 in the black faith we sing. You may be seated. As we join together this day, in this time together as part of God's people, we come together as a people of prayer. Some of the prayers that we come to, to share are, the, are those prayers of, of joy and excitement, stories that are just waiting to be told. Some of those prayers that we come to share are those cares that we need assistance. We need the, the helping hands to carry, and we need to hear those words of assurance that God truly is with us. As we gather here this morning, are there requests for prayer? Yes, Megan. Yes. Prayers for Meg Jones uh, Bear's uh, mother, who's uh, dealing with some health issues this morning. Thank you. Are there others? Yes. Carolyn.
good to hear. So prayers of thanksgiving and joy for McLean's successful surgery. Thanks, Taylor. Yes. Okay, prayers for her family and friends of Judy Wirtz um, with her passing. Thanks for that. Are there others? Prayers for Beth's dad as he recovers from a fall with four broken ribs. Thank you. Yes, Linda. <coughs> Prayers for those dealing with the aftermath of the earthquake, earthquake in Alaska. Thank you. Mary Jo. Okay. <laughs> Continued prayers for Patricia Ebert as she continues to deal with her health issues and recover that. Yes. For the Tokels, yes. Yes, prayers for the Tokels uh, as they have their, their service celebration of life for Sandy um, this, this coming week. Are there others? We did have a joy shared last hour that um, I see Scott has already stepped out of the room. We thoroughly embarrassed him last hour, uh, which was okay, <laughs> uh, because it was lifted as a joy, a celebration for uh, him receiving his 300th win uh, as coach. So uh, that was a joy that was shared last hour as well. Um, let's pray. Gracious Lord, we are thankful for the many ways in which you are present in our lives. So for those moments when we, we encounter you in such a way that we almost can't help ourselves but to be excited about the moment. We give our thanks to you for the good news that McLean's surgery was successful uh, this, this past week. We also joined together in giving our, our, our thanksgiving and our joy at the news of, of Scott's success as a coach and for his, his team and for the program with the 300th win this week. We are grateful for those who have heard your invitation to, to give of themselves in such a way that they become that living witness to, to your graceful presence. We give our thanks for those in the Stephen ministry, for the Trinity United Methodist Church, for Women at the Well, for the ministries, the Crossroads ministry, and, and with, for Larry Keese's missionary efforts there at the Africa University in Zimbabwe. Lord, we lift up those who are dealing with, with concerns in life. We pray for Natasha and America and Cheyenne. We pray for all of those who are dealing with the aftermath of the hurricanes and the typhoons and the, and the floods and, and especially recently here the Alaskan earthquake. Watch over them and for those who are responding to the needs that they might all be kept safe. Lord, we pray for those who are dealing with health concerns. We, we name before you a, a number of folk who are dealing with ongoing health concerns and we pray that your healing touch be with them in such a way that, that they experience that wholeness of body, mind, and soul. In addition to the ones that are listed there, we, we would lift up um, uh, Meg, Meg Jones Bear's mother as uh, she deals with, with her health needs. Uh, we lift up Beth's dad as he recovers from that fall and, and broken ribs. Uh, we hold up Trish Ebert as uh, she continues to deal with, with her health challenges. And Lord, for those who are entering into this season um, as a time of, of grief and loss, uh, we pray that your, your peace be with them in such a way that their hearts might be comforted. We hold up before you the, the family of Sandy Tokel and for the family and friends of Judy Wirtz. Lord, we pray for the United Methodist Church, for the, the commission on the way forward, for the Council of Bishops, for all the delegates to the special general conference, that they be guided by your spirit as they work together to discern what it means for, for this denomination to go forth into the world with a, with a message of love and grace. We pray for our Bishop Lori Holler and our District Superintendent, uh, Reverend Hee-Chan John. We ask your blessings upon both of them as they offer themselves to, to the ministry of this, this district, this conference, the United Methodist Church, the world beyond. And Lord, for all of those who, who are working to address the mental health uh, needs of this community, the members of the Mental Health Consortium, 
for the other providers, for friends, family, community members. We ask your blessings upon them all as they, they offer themselves in ad addressing this particular community need. Lord, we are aware that there are those who are dealing with, with long-term needs, more than just a particular season in their life. We pray that they might not only have the strength for those, for those days, but also the courage to rest upon you uh, through them. And we lift before you this morning Peyton and Hunter and Jake. Lord, we ask that wherever there is, there is conflict in this world, whether it be within a family or community or between nations, that in each of those places your peace would manifest itself. Lord, we pray for those who have been displaced and, and now travel as refugees and, and immigrants. Uh, we pray that they might find the safe sanctuary that they are seeking and in need of. And Lord, we ask that all of those whose lives have been touched by, by violence or terrorism, that as they pick up the pieces and put their lives back together, that they are able to do so upon a strong foundation of your love, grace, and mercy. We pray for all of these things, as well as those things upon our hearts, as we pray as your Son, our Lord and Savior, taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. And now as the ushers wait upon us, we are reminded that this is a moment of not only offering our gifts to God, but offering our very selves, our lives, to the work of God's kingdom. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Let us pray together. Ever-present God, be present in these gifts that others may know your loving presence. Make them be for the world signs of your presence, signs of your love, signs of Christ, and signs of Christmas love. In gratitude and hope we pray. Amen. You may be seated. You'll find our prayer of great thanksgiving uh, for today uh, in the bulletin or on the screen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away, forgot what time it was, and failed to love you as you loved, your love remained constant. You did not forget your promise or us, for your love never failed, and you neither slumber nor sleep. You delivered us from captivity, made us into your covenant people, and spoke prophetic truth to us. You called us to wake up, to pay attention, and to live as your covenant people at all times and in all places. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn, saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your holy name. In the fullness of time, you sent your son, Jesus Christ, as a tiny child, as a mighty prophet, as a wise teacher, as a loving savior, 
to reveal your presence in the world, healing and teaching, proclaiming and prophesying. Christ continues to reveal your present presence even now. Through Christ's powerful love and endless grace, we are invited into your presence, rescued from our sins, and led on your path of justice and righteousness. On the night before his death, Jesus took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to the disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, Jesus took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to the disciples, saying, Drink from this, all of you. This is my life in the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts of love and grace, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as children of the one who is and was and is to come. We offer ourselves as children of your time and your timing, children seeking to live your loving presence in the world as we now proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts of bread and cup. Make them be for us the life and love of Christ, that we may be the body of Christ for the world, redeemed and renewed by Christ's love and God's grace. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with one another, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in that final victory and we feast at the heavenly banquet. Through Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. We, as many as we are, are one body, for it is from one loaf that we all partake. When we break the bread, it is a sharing in the body of Christ. When we give thanks over the cup, it is sharing in the blood of Christ. I invite the communion stewards to come forward. The table is set, and each of you is invited by name to come and to hear to be fed body and soul. 
country is no requirement of membership, of age, of gender, of nationality, background. The only thing that is asked is that you truly desire what is offered here. We'll receive our elements this morning by intention. As you come forward, you can hold your hand out. A piece of bread will be given you. Then we can dip it into the cup and take the elements together. If you have need uh, for dairy-free or gluten-free, um, let the ushers know we can take care of those needs here at the front table. So at this point, as the ushers guide us, come and be fed here, body and soul. Gracious Lord, as we receive these gifts of grace from your table, help them to transform us in such a way that as we go forth from this table, we go forth as the body of Christ into this world. Help us, Lord, to be so excited about the fact that you are present, you are coming, you are yet to be, that we can take that message of good news and grace into all the lives that we touch empowered by what we have received here. We ask this in Christ's name. Amen. I invite you to stand as you're able that we can join together in our closing hymn. Number 3048, that's in the green songbook. As you now prepare to go from this place to all that's waiting for you beyond those doors, go in such a way that this world know there is something truly good to be excited about. So often the world out there that we are going back to looks around and it sees all that there is to be afraid of, to be worried about. What they see is just the bare branch. Go from this place in such a way that when the world looks at you, you see God's love wrapped around you in such a way they know it also wraps around them. Go from this place in such a way that the world, when it looks upon you, sees that Christ walks with you and walks with them as well. Let them be excited. Go from this place in such a way that the world can see it as God's own spirit that fills you and sustains you and gives you cause to rejoice and be exciting and to be excited in such a way they know that same spirit is present with them as well. 
go from here and be excited. Amen.